Um, thanks for having me here today. As Andrew already mentioned, Hilton Worldwide has a very close relationship with the school and this school is actually one of five schools that we partner with uh, in this region for attracting talent to our organisation. So the presentation I'm going to go through today is, yes, it's focused around grooming, but a little bit more than that. It's more about actual branding and association with brand and your actual image. So as I'm going through this, if you've got any questions, please feel free to stop me and I'll be able to answer those questions for you. So. Um, my name is Richard Todd, as already identified. I also have one of my colleagues here, Cassandra Ellis. Cassandra is actually a graduate from this school as well, and she works with me in the Australasian Regional Office as Human Resources Administrator. Um, so just an introduction to who our company is. As Hilton Worldwide, we actually operate 10 brands globally. We have 3,750 hotels located all around the world. We have a very specific vision for our organisation, which is to uh, fill the earth with the light and warmth of hospitality. And part of that is actually about the image of the people that work within our organisation. So image is very important to us. What we'll be covering is image and uniforms. Obviously, you're studying hospitality. Uh, it's very likely that you'll be wearing a uniform, uh, whether you work for Hilton or somewhere else, and the impact that actually has on the perception of our brands. We'll also have a look at brand association. What do you expect when you see a particular brand? Um, and what are the expectations the brand has of you if you're representing that brand? We'll then have a look at uh, personal brands and then we'll have a look at positions and roles um, and what they really look like. So in regards to branding, people actually represent themselves as a brand. So we've got some images here on the screen. Can everyone identify who those people are? Who are the people in the brands that you can see? Okay, Brittany, we can see Brittany, who else? Lady Gaga, who else? Yes, Kardashian. Don't know who the tattoo guy is? No? What about the guy with the mohawk? Sorry? I actually have no idea who they are. <laughs> They've been just like, selected off Google and just random them. Because um, the purpose of this slide is just to identify that people actually portray themselves as a brand. And that brand is very clear, is very focused, so that people can identify with that particular brand. So we're not just talking about specific product brands, but people actually brand themselves as well. As people entering the hospitality industry, you need to be aware of what your brand says. How you look speaks volumes to potential employers. And it's really important that you learn that when you're starting to go through the interview stage to get uh, an assignment with a particular company. So in regards to working in industry, the uniform is often an identifier for our guests as to who works in the organisation and who doesn't. That's really important because if a guest is in the hotel, they need to know who to come to for service. So we can see from the uniforms that we've got here, they're clearly identifiable. We've got a chef in a chef's uniform. Everyone knows what someone's going to be doing when they're wearing that uniform. The other uniforms that we've got here, the top in the center, what do you think this person does as a career? Military. Person next to him? ambulance isn't it so it's very clear and it's important to understand that no matter who you are when you do a particular role you're playing a particular character to make it easy to play that character hotels put you into a uniform they put you into that character they provide that framework to get your mindset focused on what you'll be doing at work so it can feel like a real drag I've got to go to work I've got to put a uniform on I've got to look a particular way but companies put those uniforms and those guidelines around it because there are expectations around the brand of what the guest expects of you. This brand, what is the brand? Mercedes. What does Mercedes do? Cars, what sort of cars? How would you describe the cars? They're luxury, what else? Expensive, yeah? What else? Quality level, high quality, yeah. How many of you have a Mercedes? Okay, so no one here has a Mercedes, but everyone is clearly able to articulate some characteristics of that brand. That brand is very powerful. 
it's expensive, it's luxury, it's quality. And behind that brand, when people interact with that brand from a face-to-face -face perspective, there is a certain image that goes with that. So behind that brand, this is a snapshot of some of the team from Mercedes. The brand is a luxury lifestyle brand. So the image of what the people look like that work at Mercedes is luxury lifestyle. These people look reasonably affluent, they're well dressed, well presented, and they fit in with that brand. You're going to make choices in regards to your career. Where do you feel comfortable? Where do you want to work? It's very important that you get your brand associated with a brand that you feel comfortable with. Let's have a look at this brand. McDonald's. What does McDonald's do? Fast food, yeah? Who's eaten McDonald's? Everyone, right? Okay, so what do you expect from McDonald's? Grease. Grease. <laughs> quick. 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 quick, efficient, consistent product. No matter where you go in the world, the product is very consistent. There may be a Maharaja Mac in India that we don't have here in Australia or something different in another country, but the core product is the same. So behind this brand, they've got a look and feel as well. The look of someone working at McDonald's typically is this blue uniform. So when we see someone at McDonald's wearing the blue uniform, we automatically know that person's a McDonald's employee. It's very visual. So this brand, Hilton Worldwide, what does this brand represent? Who is this brand? What do you know about Hilton? Hotel group? Yep, one of the largest hotel groups in the world. Yes, they do. So there's 10 brands. Hampton Inn, yes. Yeah, Waldorf Astoria, whole heap of different brands. So you're studying hospitality. This is the most recognized hotel brand in the world. Nine out of 10 people everywhere in the world know this brand. So behind this brand are people that represent the brand and they have a certain look and we have certain grooming guidelines. So not just Hilton Worldwide, but all of the other big companies, Hyatt, Marriott, IHG, they've all got certain standards. They've all got uniforms and they've got certain brand images that they need to portray. So when you walk into a Hilton hotel, you're likely to see people that look like this. They're well groomed, they're in a uniform, and they're portraying a brand. They're delivering what a guest expects to see. So in regards to the personal brand, when you start out your career, it's likely that you're going to start in the hospitality industry at an operational frontline position. That means that you're always going to be in a uniformed position. So you need to understand when you join a company, what are those expectations? How do you wear the uniform? What looks right? When you're at school or in a peer group, you try and fit in with what suits that peer group. You go with trends. There's nothing wrong with following trends, but when you're portraying a brand that has a particular image, it doesn't always gel. So we'll talk about some statistics in regards to the recruitment process and what impact your particular brand can have during the recruitment process. Any questions about this so far? Okay. I know that when you start out, you need to wear a uniform. That's me starting out in my hospitality career. In 1989, I worked at the Intercontinental Hotel, and that's me. Different haircut? Certainly. <laughs> um, but I had to wear a uniform every day. So I'd come to work in my casual clothes and I would change into a uniform. I didn't have any control over what that uniform looked like, but I had to wear it to be part of that team. The top picture is me also in a uniform. That's also at the same hotel. I worked in the banqueting area and they often did themed events. This particular day was the launch of Paloma Picasso's first perfume in Australia. 
and everybody dressed up in period costumes. I had no idea that I was going to be wearing that costume when I went to work that day and I wasn't very happy about putting makeup on my face and wearing a wig and that big outfit. But I was part of a team and part of an image they were creating for a particular event. I also worked in Cairns and I was lucky enough to wear this very bright polyester shirt in 30 degree humid temperatures in Cairns. Again, not something I personally would have picked wearing, but it's about fitting into a company and about representing that company and the look that they're actually trying to achieve. So when you work in a hotel, you will wear a uniform and you need to identify with that particular brand. Um, creating your personal brand for the hospitality industry. No matter which department that you actually work in, there's going to be a look and a feel that the hotel wants. That's changing a lot in the hospitality industry right now. If you look at the Hilton Sydney, we actually have Zeta Bar, Marble Bar, Glass Restaurant. They're very non-traditional five-star hotel outlets. So the look and feel that we're trying to attract there is not the typical business look for a hotel employee. So the people that we recruit there can be a little bit different. We want that characteristic to come through. Other hotel companies are doing the same. So again, it's important for you to identify what do you think you look like? What do you feel comfortable looking like? And picking that organisation that actually suits your natural characteristics as well. Um, in regards to your own brand, important to understand it's not just when you walk through the door for an interview that a company is looking at your brand. These days, we're looking far wider than just meeting you face to face. We're looking at things like social media, any type of information that we can see about applicants through social media, through your Facebook pages, through your LinkedIn pages. These all have become part of the recruitment process. How you look is only one part of that package. How you put together your CV, the differentiators between you and another candidate are really critical. You need to give a lot of thought, not just on how you are gonna present, but all the information behind you, because that's what recruiters are actually looking at. Why does it matter? Let's have a look at some numbers. So a few numbers to have a look at. The first number, 262, that is the number of vacancies that I have in the region that I'm responsible for, Australasia, in February. We had 262 vacancies across our 12 hotels. The next number, 28,100, what do you think that number is? No, it's applicants, 28,000. 100 people applied for those 262 jobs. You're going to be looking for a job in the hospitality industry. This is the month of February. 28,000 people applied in Australasia for 262 positions. You're competing with those people. The next number, 107. That's 107 candidates for each of the vacancies that we actually have. 35%, we interviewed 35% of that number during the month of February. So across all of our hotels, we interviewed 35%. Why only 35%? 35% of those people match the criteria that we were looking for. If you're starting out in the industry, it's likely that you don't have a lot of experience. It means that through a typical recruitment process, your application probably wouldn't get seen by someone face to face. It would automatically be cut out. But your school is lucky because we actually partner with your school and it means we'll actually get to meet you outside of the traditional recruitment process. 88, that's the number of people we actually hired out of those 28,100 people in the month of February. So it means we didn't fill all the vacancies. We didn't fill the vacancies because we didn't find the right people that had the right match for what we're looking for. But what's really important to understand about your personal branding and your image is the next number. 22% of all of the people that we met were not suitable to work in our hotels based on how they arrived for the interview, how they looked, 
what they wore, how they presented themselves, didn't match what we were looking for for our brand. So we've seen Mercedes, we've seen McDonald's, very specific looks they're going for. At Hilton, we're looking for a particular look as well. The photos that I showed you of our well-groomed Hilton people, that's the thing we're looking for. That's a basic in hospitality. It's not our job to tell you what good grooming looks like. Your school will have guidelines, but it's important that you have a look. What do other people look like in the organisation that you're applying? Basic grooming standards need to always be part of that. You need to remember that you're selling yourself and in one month you're competing against 28,000 people potentially. These are some of your competitors as well. There are other hotel schools in Sydney. You're just one of five partner schools that we work with and we really like working with you because we like the calibre of people that come from the school. But we're also looking at other hotel schools. So getting that initial impression right is absolutely critical. Any questions? So don't just think about grooming as a have to do, it's a must do. You must get that part right. That's the part that's going to engage somebody in having discussion with you about your career at Hilton. Thank you very much. Thank you.